And welcome everyone live to Muscatine High School and Muscatine Community Gymnasium on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network as the Muscatine Muskie boys make their home debut tonight after starting their season with a two-game road trip. The Muskies return home to host Davenport West. I'm Joel Krausar on the play-by-play -play tonight, joined by my new partner, someone I've known a long time, had the pleasure to coach some football with several years ago uh, at the middle school level, but what was probably best known for in our community, three-time Mississippi Athletic Conference Coach of the Year, state, uh, two state appearances as an assistant coach for the Muskies, one state appearance as the head coach for the Muskies, 18-year veteran of the bench for the Muskies as the head coach, 21-year veteran of the Muskies as the total coach in our community, Coach T.Y., Terry Youngbauer, my partner for the boys' season. Welcome, Coach, and thanks. Joel, thank us. you. Thank you, and, and thanks to Chris also for having me here. I was uh, very excited when Chris uh, called me and asked me to fill in and, and do this, and uh, my wife said, you'd enjoy it. And I said, <laughs> I love I love the job. I, I've listened to you and Brian over the years, and you guys do a fantastic job, and I thought, man, it'll, she's right. It'll be fun, and I'm, I'm excited about it. Looking forward to having that basketball knowledge here at the helm, and not just from the coaching perspective, did some research, Coach. You, you Member got, of the All-Decade team you, at Drake University for the 80s. Teammate with Lewis Lloyd, fourth-round draft pick by the Golden well, State Warriors, 1979 to 1982. A guard, averaged six points per game in your college career, but with everything I've read, true distributor for the Drake Bulldogs. Joel, you must have been up all night. You know, <laughs> uh, I hope I don't have to do as much homework as you had to do. I mean, you had to really dig deep to find some of that. But, no, thank you. I appreciate all the... All the nice comments, and uh, it was great to play with a guy like Lewis Lloyd. Uh, you know, Philadelphia he, he, legend. Yes, he makes it. He uh, he makes makes you a lot lot better player. That's for sure. <laughs> I knew where my bread was buttered, and I knew who to throw the basketball to. Absolutely. So we'll be here to break this one down as the Muskies take on Davenport West. We're going to take a quick break. We'll talk a little bit more about the new Muscatine head coach Luke Torelli, his first year as the head varsity coach. We'll be back shortly on the pregame show presented. Five, Muscatine, Power and Water. Artie's Ice Cream and Grill, 609 West 5th Street, Wilton, Iowa. We are looking for a zero-turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience, we know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero-turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Hi, I'm Ashley, and I'd like to take a minute to talk to you about Pearl City Media. At Pearl City Media, we develop custom marketing solutions for businesses of all kinds. Between radio, cable TV, newspaper, Facebook, Google, and YouTube ads, it can be tough to make sure your business is seen and understood by the right people. Pearl City Media understands that people are everywhere. And reaching the right kind of people for your business isn't so simple. Maybe you want to increase your business's awareness and sell more inventory. Or maybe you want to book more appointments. Or maybe you need a bump in your lunchtime traffic. Whatever your goals are, Pearl City Media will listen and create a strategic campaign focused on helping you reach those goals. We handle all the strategy, planning, execution, Four minutes from tip-off as the Muscatine Musky boys make their home debut. I'm Joel Krausar along with Terry Youngbauer on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. It's a new era of Muskie basketball. Coach Luke Torelli taking the helm as the head varsity coach. Similar path that you could probably relate to. Longtime assistant under Coach Belger, Coach Gary Belger, and Coach Wyndham. Now Luke Torelli takes the helm as the head coach. In a similar age bracket probably when you took the helm, what is – that experience like you know you, you're coming through and now all of a sudden the program's yours and you call all the shots oh it's got to be super exciting for coach Torelli you know 
I think, like you, you indicated, he's worked under some great coaches here at Muscatine, uh, both uh, Coach Belger and Coach Wyndham, guys who have been in the game for a long time. And from uh, some of the comments I read, you know, Lucas has implemented a lot of the stuff he's learned from those two guys, which I think is smart. You know, as a coach, we always steal from, from other oh, coaches. Absolutely. You know, there's not much that's invented new. I mean, I, some somewhere along the line it was, but that's flattery, you know, and, and it's dumb for a coach not to take things that you like to see other coaches do. And I'm sure he's doing that. But then again, I'm sure he's excited that it's his program and he can kind of tweak things and put his own stamp on it, you know. And, and not only has he coached under some great coaches, he played under some great coaches, a veteran of the Augustana basketball program, which is one of the top Division three programs in the country. A tremendous program. I just went to an Augie game a couple of weeks ago, and uh, they are still awfully good. And I'd be remiss if we didn't mention Coach Joel Witcher's on the staff as well. Joel's been a mainstay here for um, for a long time, and a long-time junior high coach. He's coached a lot of years. Great teacher of basketball. I mean, he is just an outstanding coach. Loves to teach the game, and that's that's what you you know that's what you want out of a coach. Also assisted by Brandon Van Zant, who may not be a name super familiar to to the Muskie faithful. I had the pleasure of coaching Brandon for four years in football, Wilton High School. Fantastic athlete. I was his position coach. He's a great tight end, great ball player for the for the Wilton Beavers. Uh, knows a lot of these kids from his job as director of sports programs at the Muscatine Y. He's an invaluable assistant and. He grew up, you know, his stepfather, Josh, Josh Miller, Miller, the number I was just two say, he, leading he, scorer he in comes by, He comes by naturally there. Yeah, Josh, quite a quite a, quite a, a player. Oh, just fantastic, fantastic young man. And uh, hopefully he's listening tonight. Uh, but, yeah, that's exciting to have Brandon on the staff. I'm sure he'll do a great job for the Muskies. Good coach. Played some college basketball himself at the NAIA level in Des Moines. And uh, we're looking forward to, to this new staff and, and this new team as we get looking forward here to the starting lineups. And those starting lineups for the Muskies as we get to the players here. Some veteran leadership coming back in Braden Hufford, the senior point guard who played many minutes, started many games last season for the Muskies. And some new faces for the Muskies, but, but uh, with some familiar names. And we'll talk about the Muskie starting lineups right here. Braden Hufford, I mentioned, the 6'3 senior guard. He even started point guard. Dante Lee played some very valuable minutes last year for Muscatine. He'll be in the starting lineup as well as a senior guard. Caleb Bettis, the junior center, six foot four, uh, getting the start. And then Diamond Craigie, a new face to the Muskie program, not to the athletics department, but uh, came back out for basketball this year. And I know Coach Torelli is excited about having the six four forward. The Muskies will be starting a freshman. Six five freshman. Last name that you may have heard before, Luke Wieskamp, the youngest of the Wieskamp brothers, will be making his first home start tonight. And Luke is a really good shooter. Um, he's, he's played a lot of basketball in his life already at the AAU level. Looking forward to seeing how his high school his high school season uh, develops. He is the leading scorer. The Muskies coming in tonight at 9.5 points per game. Yeah, Luke is not going to be intimidated. As you said, he's played a lot of basketball. Uh, you know, just his family's been around it, uh, and uh, you know he's going to do an outstanding job. He's going to have an outstanding career. I was fortunate enough to be around him last year, coaching over at Susan Clark, and he just did a fantastic job last year. Um, Diamond Cray, he was another young man I got to coach. He's he's a, he's a really fine young man too, and he's got some he's got a big upside. He had he had some very good talent, and I know he took a year off of basketball, so good to have him back. Caleb Bettis was a diamond in the rough, I thought, in, in eighth grade as well. I got a chance to coach him. And I think some of those guys, just you just need some game experience, you know. Yeah, and that's the insight I'm looking forward to having all year long with you here, having coached a lot of these kids. Uh, Luke, making me feel old, he was five months old at my wedding. Wow. So, wow. so I remember him, uh, him being at my wedding. Time marches on. Yes, Joel. absolutely. Starting for the Davenport West Falcons tonight, Jermaine Gardner. A five foot ten senior guard, also starting Zach Postian, six five senior center, Fearless Carruthers, a six one senior guard for the Falcons, the Zion Carruthers, a six foot senior guard, and then Mario Clark, a six three senior forward. So the Falcons starting five seniors, and having that experience is going to be great. Their leading scorer is the Zion Carruthers at seventeen and a half points per game. Both teams are 0-2. The Falcons fell to Iowa City West 71-56 in week one. Assumption 77-62 on Tuesday. The Muskies fell to Iowa City High on Saturday 81-41 and they lost against Clinton 59-42 on Tuesday night. 
So, Muscatine, both teams looking for their first win. It's big to have these conference games here right off the bat, too. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure both teams are hungry. You know, you, early on, you, you want to get that first win and just get on track. And I'm sure both teams will be hungry and come out and play very hard tonight. As they wrap up the starting lineups, we'll now keep it right here as we await the national anthem. National anthem completed, and what's tip off time? You still get the, you still get the oh, adrenaline. You still you get know, the, the, just the, just walking in the gym was kind of exciting, and uh, I didn't get to a ton of games last year, but it's just always fun to walk into a gym, especially early on in the season. And you know, I'm not as familiar with some of the players out there, so it's, it's kind of exciting for me to just uh, get a, a good look at. Them. You get to enjoy retirement, but we appreciate you again, Coach Terry Youngbauer. Our new color man for boys basketball here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Students in full voice, nothing like a Friday night. Where else do you want to be? Tipping off for the Muskies will be number 23, Diamond Crahey. And Zach Postian, the 6'5", senior for the Falcons. Muscatine wins the opening tip. So now we have a held ball situation. So that will go with to the Falcons as the possession arrow was just in <laughs> Muscatine. Or no, re -tip. Oh, Wow, that's kind of strange. I thought we had possession. But. So now West will earn the tip and get the quick bucket. That's the Zion for others. Gets right to the rack. As Braden Hufford brings it up the floor for the Muskies. Man-to-man -man defense for West. Lee to Wieskamp. Good cut, but no good by Crahey. That was a nice shot in the lane, Joe. I know it didn't go, but it's good to see him get in the, in the paint. For others, goes baseline, able to get to the rack. He's got four quick points. Now Muscatine breaks the press. Active hands from West. Looks like West has a little bit of quickness out there, Joe. Second deflection already as Hufford inbounds underneath their own basket. Loose ball. Now that'll be a jump ball, and it'll go to Muscatine. Right now, West looking to get after every 50-50 ball, and they're, they're trying to create as many turnovers as they can. Coach David Robinson for West. Putting the pressure on. Dante Lee gets the inbound. Wieskamp for three. And it's good. Luke Wieskamp. Three-point basket from First National Bank of Muscatine. Now, a delay a game warning on Muscatine okay. for touching the ball after it's gone through the basket. That's big hitting your first shot, especially for Luke, a freshman. I'm sure that's... Uh it's going to be a big confidence builder for him and should lead him into a big game. 
Nice out. pass from Dante Lee as well. You know, finding it on the wing there. Good ball movement. Muscatine in the half court defense. As Jermaine Gardner will bring it up for West. Gardner's a strong looking player. Yes, he is. Carruthers now, top of the key. The Zion Carruthers can't finish with the left, gets his own rebound. Jump shot, no good. Another offensive board for the Falcons. Inside of Carruthers. He's fouled by Craig. West is really active on the offensive boards early on here. You know, they're not real big, neither are we, but they really are going after those long rebounds. We're seeing a lot of that quickness that you mentioned earlier, both on the defensive pressure and in battling for the long rebounds. Brothers misses the first free throw. Six twenty seven to go here in the first quarter. Second free throw rolls in. And after the made basket, the left west set up the full court press. Diamond Cray, he breaks it, gets it up the lead. Offer it on the wing. Pass is stolen. That's Mario Clark with the steal. Now to Zion for others who thinks about the jumper. Lee's going to get called for the foul. That's a tough call. You know, he was in position. He jumped out on that. And just the, he just reached a little bit. And any time the official, if you reach a lot of times, it looks like a foul, they're going to call it. Clark resets the offense for the Falcons. Clark for three. No good. Rebound, Crahey. Nice job. Now Dante Lee will bring it up with the Zion. Clark guarding it. Strong take. No shot. They're calling it before the shot. So it will be Muscatine ball. It was a nice, strong drive by Dante, uh, Joel, and unfortunately he just didn't get the uh, call. He got it on the floor. That happens. Yeah, it looks like they, they called the knee contact before he was able to get up. You'll get that in co college or NBA, but not, <laughs> not here. So 5-3 substitutions coming in for West. Inbound to Lee, and he's fouled going to the rim. Mario Clark will pick up this foul. Second team foul on the Falcons. That was a really nice out of bounds play. Uh, Caleb Bettis set a nice up screen, and Dante cut hard to the basket, and they, they found him. And that was that was a really nice play by Muscatine. First free throw, good. Second free throw, good. Now Clark. Brings it up for West. Fearless Carruthers with the drive. Now this is Landon Winston who's checked into the game. He picks, he draws the foul. Got called for a little hand check there. As Coach Spencer Lloyd used to say, you got to adjust the officiating. So I don't know how you guys did it. I would have been ejected from every game. <laughs> Locked by Bettis. Did a nice job staying vertical there, not reaching. Three-pointer. No good. Another offensive rebound, though, by the Falcons. Brothers misses. Wieskamp gets the board. And now West looking to trap. Got to look up the floor here. We nice stand, pushes it up, well, unable to catch it, but that was the right play by the Muskies. Great job. Anytime you get trapped like that, if you, it's a second pass, they really take take advantage of it. And they, that was a nice pass by Luke. Just unfortunately went right through Diamond's hands. So Clark brings it up for West. Mm -hmm. 
Winston for three. Good. Good looking shot there. Now Hufford gets it over to Wieskamp. Wieskamp gets it over the timeline, but then turns it over. And Hufford with a foul, but that's not a it's yeah, not a bad I, foul. I, I think that probably saved two points there, Joel. They had a they had an advantage there at the uh, at the offensive end. You know, we're, we're breaking the press okay. It's just once we get to the other end, we've made a couple poor decisions. And, and uh, you know, just sometimes if it's not there, you just got to run some offense in. Devin Sanders checks in for, for West. Zion Carruthers over to Scott. Scott now finds Carruthers. Ooh, he's almost out of bounds. Yeah. But he gets the bucket. He kind of just bowled his way in there and, you know, went up strong with it. Pray he finds Wieskamp. Luke with a the crossover. There's a nice job. This is the Hufford. Shot fake. Mid-range jumper, no good. And ben, that's going to be out on Muscatine if Caleb Bettis is unable to secure the rebound. Jaime Martinez, or excuse me, Miles Melendez will check in now for the Muskies along with Connor Christensen. Good to see Connor back out oh. there. A great athlete, great leader in this senior class. Suffered a... Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it in, in a break. But suffered a crazy injury during the football season. We're just happy to see Connor back out. Yeah, Connor's just like as you indicated, a fantastic kid. So I'm, I'm really pulling for him. I hope he has some success and stays healthy. Yeah, Mario Clark crosses over. We we'll get to Scott at the elbow. Now Clark drives baseline. Good defense by the Muskies. Warding off the Falcon threat there. Now Clark looks to reset. Excuse me, Gardner looks to reset. And an offensive foul as there's Connor Christensen right there giving up his body. Real nice job of Connor stepping in there and taking that charge. West really likes to put their head down and get to the basket. That's what you got to do. Make them think about it next time. We stand tough inbounds but finds Lee. And now Lee crosses over and breaks the press. And Lee's going to draw another foul. Good, strong take from Dante Lee. And sometimes with this full court man-to-man -man where it's not the trapping zone, is that the best as you get it to a ball handler and you give him some space to absolutely, try to beat one -on -one? Absolutely, clear out. And then if you see a double team, you've got to come back and help your teammate out. But, yeah, get it to a guy that you know can handle it. And Dante's... A great ball and got good quickness, so I think that's a good that's a good move on Musk. Good part. deflection by West, but Hufford able to get it. Floater in, good. Muscatine cuts the lead to three with just over three minutes to play in the first quarter. That was real nice. He took his time there and just you know got his feet set, and shot a nice little floater in the lane. Carruthers drives and kicks. Now Gardner into the game for, for West. Carruthers. They travel before the offensive foul. I think they were going to call it a charge, but they called the travel first. Good communication by the officials there. I think you're right, Joel. I think, you know, as you said, Muscatine kids, there was a couple kids right there in position to take a charge. So uh, that's, a, that's a nice sign for Muscatine. Inbounded to Melendez. Melendez gets it across the timeline. Dante Lee now. Finds Wieskamp in the wing. The defense really extending out on Wieskamp. They've identified him as a shooter. Luke drives. Kicks to Lee. Lee with the jumper, no good. Rebound West. Now the Zion for others. Almost another turnover there. Shot blocked by Wieskamp. And now Muscatine looking to push numbers. Good attempt there, but Muscatine turns it over. 
Well, it's really been a fast-paced game, Joel, yeah. so far in the first quarter. Both and, teams are playing very hard. And low scoring, though, yes. because yes. both defenses are being extremely yeah. active. Active hands. Kids are moving their feet. And one of the basketball coaches I got to be around at the college level was Jamie Sale. He's the women's coach at Morningside College. He's won seven national championships at the NAIA level. And he always talked about active hands, and he actually didn't track steals. He tracked tip tips. Ball. Sure, absolutely. That's a great stat. Tell you, Muscatine's got some kids that have nice length, and that, that really plays into that where you say tips and things like that. Clark with the drive. Rebound, Connor Christensen. And now Miles Melendez will bring it up for Muscatine. A minute 30 to play here in the first quarter. And then they're going to call the arm bar there on Clark. It's already five team fouls for West, Joel, so that's a good good thing for the Muscatine kids, too. Get to the free throw line. Inbound to Hufford. It is Christmas PJ night in the Muscatine student section. Wieskamp for three. No good. Rebound. West looks to push. This is Gardner. And Cray, he's going to get called for the foul. West just looking to run as soon as they get that rebound. Yeah, they really push the ball. I'll tell you, that last offensive possession for Muscatine, the Melendez kid did a great job getting it to the basket, threw a nice pass underneath there to Wieskamp. He got a nice look at it, just didn't go down. But that was really a nice nice possession for Muscatine. Coach Torelli will take that shot every time. Absolutely. Gardner to the free throw line. Five team fouls on the Muskies now. And Gardner misses the first. Bickford Senior Living of Muscatine bringing you Muskie Athletics all season long, along with Toyota of Muscatine and the Youth Sports Foundation of Muscatine. Joel, I see a lot of kids breathing awfully hard out there tonight. That's going to be that's going to be four long quarters for some of these kids. Some real running going on. Oh God, they're second, playing really fast paced. Second free throw, good for Gardner. And Muscatine hasn't subbed a lot. No. Hufford to Melendez. Over to Hufford. He drives, and he's going to draw a foul. Good controlled move there by Hufford when he received that pass. Showed the ball and was able to get to the rim, get to the lane. 16 foul with a minute three left in the first. We'll be in the bonus on the next foul. So that's that's great for Muscatine. Now Martinez drives baseline. Jaime Martinez checks into the game. Over to Christensen in the corner. Baseline drive by Christensen. He kicks out to Hufford. No good. Rebound Martinez. Now Melendez shot fake in the drive. That was a great hustle play for Jaime to track that long rebound down. Give Muscatine another possession. West able to poke it out. That's going to go off Martinez. Boy, a lot of bodies on the floor there, Joel. Those fearless Carruthers was able to knock that ball loose. Just went off the Muskies. Gardner will bring it up for the Falcons. Just to the high post to Postion. Clark drives baseline, elevates, gets his own rebound, gets the put back. Clark just stayed with that and got a second second after there and pushes put the, it in. Pushes the lead to six. Ten seconds to go here in the first quarter. Martinez finds Melendez. Two seconds. Melendez just tries to get a shot off. And that will be the end of the first quarter. If the Muskies trail by six, we'll take a fast break here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. 
At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially when it comes to the driving experience. Let's take a closer look. Our legendary smooth track steering provides buttery smooth turns, making maneuvering around obstacles a breeze. Unlike the jerky feel of other options, our smooth track steering is so effortless, anyone could make short work of the lawn. Hustler Turf. And welcome back to the beginning of the second quarter here as the Muskies trail Davenport West 13-7. to I'm Joel Krausar along with three-time MAC Conference Coach of the Year, Terry Youngbauer, as Mario Clark gets the ball at the top of the key. Postion for three, air balls. Good box out there by Martinez. Boy, Jaime just took him out of the play, didn't he? Took Carruthers out of position so he couldn't even try to save it. Jaime's a very physical kid. He's always oh. been physical. So much fun watching him play that yes. inside linebacker position for the Muskies. All I think fall. he showed a little of that linebacker yeah, skill right absolutely. there. Too. There's a fast break. There's Betts unable to finish. The rebound, and West looks to push. Here's the Zion Carruthers. He goes right to the rim, and he draws a foul on Christensen. Strong take going right through the center there of Christensen. Boy, that last uh, possession for Muscatine, that's too bad because – they did a super job break in the press and got just what you want. You want to make the other team pay, and we just came up short on the layup there. That's unfortunate. Uh, you know, we, we just got to do a better job converting that. Brothers goes to the free throw line. Lefty misses the first. Boy, both teams will be in the bonus on the next foul, yep. Joel, so I think we're going to see a pretty free throw, free throw line. Contact. Yeah, hopefully they've been working on them in preseason here. And can you do it when you're gassed? Because these yeah. guys have been sprinting up and down the floor. They certainly have. Second free throw, no good. Loose ball gathered by Luke Wieskamp. And now Martinez processes the trap. Melendez gets it over the timeline. Another trap coming. Melendez with the turnover. Over to Carruthers. Gets it to Miles Melendez. Jermaine Gardner. Really putting a lot of pressure on the ball handler here. Now Brothers is on Melendez. Wieskamp gets trapped. They're starting That's to the trap in the half court quite a bit too. They're trapping. Anytime they see a back turn, they're trapping. Tell you, it reminds me a little bit of old Nolan Richardson in Arkansas. 40, 40 minutes, minutes of hell. Of hell. I'll tell you what. Corlin Williamson, Corliss Williamson, that whole group. Just talking to my 10-year-old son about that team yesterday. Beautiful. Good pass. Oh, oh unable man. to finish. The Muscatine getting some good looks. They sure are, Joel. That was a nice little design play there on the out-of-bounds there. and Threw a lob to Luke and just, just came up short again. Can't fault the kids' effort. They're really playing hard. Both teams are. Austin now. Out to Gardner. High post screen. Jamilan Gardner with the strong attack. He's going to pick up the foul, though. Joel, I am starting to see some West kids with a number 10. has got his hands on his head. That's usually a sign you're breathing pretty hard trying to catch your breath. I don't know, you know that Isaiah Carruthers has come out of this game. I don't think he, he has. And I, playing at this pace and pressing full court and trapping in the half, it's going to be tough to stay in there the whole, the whole game. As Jamilan Gardner makes his first free throw. You know, and early on, conditioning's always a question mark, Joel. You just don't know how, how many practices these, these kids have had yeah. and how much time they've, they've had in the gym, so... We'll see. Callan Shadrick checks in now for West. Hufford finds Martinez. Now Hufford for three. And that's good. That's nice three pointer by Braden Hufford. Sponsored by First National Bank of Muscatine. Then Gardner answers. 
Jermaine Gardner with the top of the key three. Dante Lee comes back to get the ball. Shadrick covers him. Lee able to break that press. And he goes strong to the hoop for the bucket. Yeah, Muscatine's going to need that scoring out of Lee and Hopper both are scoring in the last two possessions. Those guys are going to have to really carry a lot of the load. They're the two leading scorers returning from last year's team. Especially while these younger kids are just getting some game experience and trying to find their way as well. So, really going to need that. Another thing that's great to see, too, is the number of multi-sport athletes we're seeing on the floor for Muscatine right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Some really nice athletes. That shot no good. That's going to be off of West. Landon Winston last to touch it, and it'll be Muscatine ball. This is where you look at the score, and you look at those two missed layups we had, Joel, and, you know, you're talking it's an eight-point game. It'd be a four-point right. game with the ball. It was really hurt. Winston contests. So much length in the passing lanes for this West team. They're just very active. Everyone on the about. floor for them is between 6'3 and 6'5. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of post-ups from either team, no. have we? <laughs> Luke Wieskamp drives to the baseline. Or free throw has it stolen. Jamilan Gardner with the layup. Well, you really got to be careful when you put the ball on the floor because, as, as we see right here, they're running and jumping a lot. And when you get a second guy coming at you, you got to get rid of the basketball. Be strong with it. Dante Lee strong to the hoop. No good. Fans wanted a foul. Shadrick for the layup. He misses. But another offensive rebound for West. Really controlling both offensive and defensive glass. There's a turnover, though. Now Lee will look to run. Does not have the numbers. And it's going to be off of Diamond. And Coach Torelli is going to call a timeout. It was really a heads-up play from the West kid. You know, you don't see it as often in, in today's game. But he threw the ball yeah. off the Mustang kid. That was only, really his only option. So full timeout. We'll take a quick 30-second break. It's Musky Sports on the Discover Musky Team Sports Network. Metal Manufacturing provides cut-to-length rolled metal panels for commercial, residential, and agricultural roofing. We take pride in delivering our products with a short lead time. Cover Muscatine Sports Network. I'm Joel Krausar along with Terry Youngbauer. Muskies trail by 10 with 4.13 to go here in the first half. And really it's been a tale of the pressure from Davenport West. Yeah, they just, you know, they, they do a great job trying to get you speeded up a little bit, and we've had a couple of miscues once we've broken the press. So, you know, I think that's West's philosophy, just try to speed you up and get you uncomfortable. Strong take from Winston, and he's going to draw the foul. Both teams are really getting to the basket tonight, you know, and, and uh, not always finishing, but they're, they're really doing a nice job getting the ball to the basket. That's the eighth team foul against the Muskies. First free throw is good for Winston. I don't know about you, Joel, but I'm tired just watching. These kids are just going up and down like crazy, and the pace is just tremendous right now. I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed how, how hard both teams are playing and how much they're getting up and down the floor. Second free throw good from Winston. Nice looking free throw throw. There's Luke Wieskamp inbounds it. Dante Lee finds it to Wieskamp. They're able to ah, get it over the timeline, but it's a miscommunication. And that's just the experience thing. That's just 
still everyone learning how to play together. Well, Dante was getting pressured on the wing there, and I think he went back door, and Luke thought he was come, coming farther to the top again. So those things happen, especially early in the season when you're just trying to figure things out and learn how to play together. Jamile and Gardner will bring it up for West to Winston. Step back shot fake from Scott. And now Gardner, step back three. In and out, Shadrick with the rebound and a strong putback. Challenge Shadrick with a strong offensive board. There's another trap. Deflected, just active hands everywhere for West. Yeah, West was really close to another steal right there. Wieskamp gets the inbound. I like what we did there, though, Joe. We threw over the top of the press. And I think that's what you have to do against some of these teams that just really want to extend, extend, extend. You know, you got to throw over the top once in a while. You catch them in a little bit of an overplay. Yeah. And you can beat them back door. Let's see if we can get that same look right here. West hadn't figured this out. But that guy trails that screen every time. Dante Lee, jumper no good, rebound bets. He has his shot blocked. That's going to be a jump ball. It'll stay Muscatine ball. 14-point lead for Davenport West with three minutes to go here in the first half. Dante Lee shot fake. Another held ball. So now West will take over. Miles Melendez will check in for the Muskies. It's a nice drive by Dante to the basket there. It's just, you know, West is really coming over with another player and helping him. Yeah, help Sometimes you gotta, yeah, you got to make that extra pass. Jamile and Gardner. Finds his way to Carruthers. Left-handed jumper, no good. Rebound, Hufford. Hufford has it stripped. That foul by Melendez. That'll be a one and one. Boy, again, those quick hands, Joel. Yeah, it's just, everything's just problematic with it. It seems to always be a guy coming coming off to help and just you know stripping our ball handler. So, you know, uh, I think we got to keep trying to get to the basket, but we may have to pull up and you know try to try to make that extra pass. Coach Robinson talking to the officials. He wanted an intentional foul on that. I I didn't see anything. I didn't see an intentional either. It was kind of a hard foul, but certainly wasn't yeah. intentional. He seemed to be playing the ball. Yeah. Muscatine again riskily at, <laughs> works that press. Inside the bets, unable to finish again, but active hands the whole way down. And now Carruthers goes up, and Wieskamp gets a lot of ball, but they're going to call the body. And Luke Wieskamp will pick up his first foul of the game. He's going for his second block. Another nice job of Muscatine breaking the press, you know, and getting something good at the other end. Again, we just... Just have come up a little short. We just haven't been able to convert on some of those. The effort is there, though. Abs you're seeing absolutely. Good execution, just not able to finish. Absolutely. Brothers makes the second. He's got 10 now. The Zion, another turnover for the Muskies. The Zion for others for West. Coming in, averaging 17 and a half points per game. He's got 10 so far here in the first half. The thing about that pressure is it really wears you down. Right. And the other thing is, you know, it's not always designed to get steals, just cause the other team to turn over. We've had a couple of turnovers on our own there. We just couldn't handle pass, or we've thrown it over somebody's head. But that press is very impressive so far for Davenport West. It can create doubt. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. There's a psychological component to it. Three ball, no good. Rebound, Melendez. And then right into the trap. They trap the rebound. Right. Going for another held ball. And now Christensen. 
Layup up no good. That's rebounded by Gardner, and he'll go rim to rim. And just Muscatine unable to stop the ball. Need to try and have a couple good possessions here to end the half, Joel, so we can get something going for the second half. Minute 30 to go here in the first half. Hufford looking to go baseline, finds Mark uh, Christensen. Passes bobbled. There's just what we talked about, just that doubt, and you're trying to do things quickly. The Muskies get a timeout. It's going to be a 30-second timeout. Yeah, so you can see that because you, now you start seeing the defender who's closing on you, and sometimes you forget to catch the ball. Yeah, he's trying to get rid of it a little faster than before he caught right. the basketball. So as you said, it's just it's creating that in your mind, that that, that, that indecision or you you get to speed it up, you're going too fast, you know. I'll tell you, you know, I'm sure Coach Torelli's just talking about right now, just got to try to settle down here. I know there's a minute nine left to see if we can have a couple of good possessions, give you something to build on, you know, going into the second half. West has really had, had a spurt here that you know kind of opened up the game here. 31-12 is the score. And it's really just been with defense creating offense. For Absolutely. Them. They haven't had to run a lot of set no, plays. No. It's, been, it's been scramble. It's been a lot yes. of scramble. Yes. I think you're right on with that comparison to those – Corliss Williamson, uh, oh. Nolan Richardson, Arkansas team. Wieskamp for three short. Rebound by Carruthers. And now Muscatine trying to force some half-court offense here for West. Jamilan Gardner thinks about a three. Rims out. Good rebound by Lee. And now West retreats a little bit. Melendez finds Lee. Baseline jumper. No good. Rebound Poston. Well, that was a nice look. Three ball. No good. Jamilan Gardner with the long board. Now Poston works West. it back around. Ten seconds to go. Playing for last shot here. He bailed out by a foul. Melendez is unable to keep his feet in front. And now a free throw is here to, with three seconds to go here in the first half. Unfortunately, yeah, that, that foul occurred out toward half court. And I don't know if the West kid had enough time to get to the basket there. But And, and you know, the kid's playing hard and he's, he's trying to be aggressive. And it's just, just. Well, it was a nice play by Gardner, too, to recognize the closeout and turn his shoulder and create yeah. some contact yeah. to draw the foul. And Gardner makes the first free throw. You know, as a coach, this is the you know the kind of team you got. You tell your kids you got to give them a little cushion. You know, make them shoot the ball from the perimeter a little bit because they they just want to get to the basket. Every guy out there. Both free throws good for the Falcons. Three seconds. It's Hufford finds Christensen, gets a shot and gets a decent look. Yeah. And it rims out. No good. Muscatine trails thirty-three to twelve. It's halftime here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. We'll take a short break. We'll be back with the Muscatine Lawn and Power Halftime Show. Hi, I'm Ashley, and I'd like to take a minute to talk to you about Pearl City Media. At Pearl City Media, we develop custom marketing solutions for businesses of all kinds. Between radio, cable TV, newspaper, Facebook, Google, and YouTube ads, it can be tough to make sure your business is seen and understood by the right people. Pro City Media understands that people are everywhere and reaching the right kind of people for your business isn't so simple. Maybe you want to increase your business's awareness and sell more inventory. Or maybe you want to book more appointments. Or maybe you need a bump in your lunchtime traffic. Whatever your goals are, Pro City Media will listen and create a strategic campaign focused on helping you reach those goals. We handle all the strategy, planning, execution, and we'll update you on the results of the campaign while constantly evaluating the effectiveness of your campaign. So what are you waiting for? Send Pearl City Media a message and start improving your marketing today.
You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially when it comes to the driving experience. Let's take a closer look. Our legendary smooth track steering provides buttery smooth turns, making maneuvering around obstacles a breeze. Unlike the jerky feel of other options, our smooth track steering is so effortless, anyone could make short work of the lawn. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Affordable Metal Manufacturing provides cut-to-length rolled metal panels for commercial, residential, and agricultural roofing. We take pride in delivering our products with a short lead time, normally three days or less. Our panels are cut to the nearest eighth of an inch for greater efficiency and less waste. Affordable Metal can even roll your panels on site. Call today for a free quote and let us become your preferred supplier. Affordable Metal Manufacturing. Our business is rolling. Artie's Ice Cream and Grill, 609 West 5th Street, Wilton, Iowa. We are looking for a zero-turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience, we know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero-turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Hi, I'm Ashley, and I'd like to take a minute to talk to you about Pearl City Media. At Pearl City Media, we develop custom marketing solutions for businesses of all kinds. Between radio, cable TV, newspaper, Facebook, Google, and YouTube ads, it can be tough to make sure your business is seen and understood by the right people. Pearl City Media understands that people are everywhere. And reaching the right kind of people for your business isn't so simple. Maybe you want to increase your business's awareness and sell more inventory. Or maybe you want to book more appointments. Or maybe you need a bump in your lunchtime traffic. Whatever your goals are, Pearl City Media will listen and create a strategic campaign focused on helping you reach those goals. We handle all the strategy, planning, execution, and we'll update you on the results of the campaign while constantly evaluating the effectiveness of your campaign. So what are you waiting for? Send Pearl City Media a message and start improving your marketing today. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. And, Hustler and welcome back. It's halftime here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. It's the Muscatine Muskie Boys Trail Davenport West, 33-12. to I'm Joel Krausar, along with Terry Youngbauer on the Muscatine Lawn and Power Halftime Show. And, Coach, it's really been a tale of the defensive pressure from West. And 
and just Muscatine unable to, to capitalize on some of the clean looks they've got. Yeah, I think, Joel, I counted five layups that we missed at the other end once we did do a nice job breaking that press. Um, and, you know, you've got to capitalize, like you said, when you get those opportunities. That kind of softens the press up a little bit then and, you know, makes them think about being a little bit too aggressive, you know. Uh, but when you don't convert like that, they just turn up the pressure even more and take more chances, gamble more. Um, so, you know, we just got to settle down and, and uh, see if we can get some uh, looks like that and, and have them go down in the second half. Muscatine led in scoring in the first half by senior Braden Hufford with five. Dante Lee had four points. Luke Wieskamp hit a three early, and then they really started closing out on him on the offensive end. For West, it's really been their leading scorer has been the Zion Carruthers with 10 points. Comes in averaging 17. But one thing, with this level of press and pressure that we're seeing from West, they're also out-rebounding Muscatine by a significant margin. But they got close to the bonus early in the first half, but then they were able to really escape foul trouble throughout the rest of the first half. Yeah, West was stuck on 16 fouls there for, for a good portion of the second quarter, and we just couldn't get that seventh foul on them. Uh, it would have been nice for a lot of reasons. Obviously, you get some free looks at the basket, the free throws. Slows the game down a little bit. You get to catch your breath a little bit, especially yeah. this kind of a pace, you know. So I think that was a real big factor that West was able to pressure as much as they do and not pick up a, a seventh foul there. You know, you're going to the whiteboard here at halftime. What, what's something that you're, you're maybe thinking about adjusting to handle this defensive and offensive attack from West? Well, you know, number one, I think, it's, it's, you know, I think Muscatine's done a decent job getting the ball across half court from the press. It's what's happened after that. And, and unfortunately, when West plays this kind of scramble, helter-skelter defense, you know, full court press, trapping in the half court, you really can't run any offense because it takes sure. you out of your offense. So you're just trying to, you know, take the ball to the basket, move the basketball, you know, out of the trap. So there's not a lot of X's and O's you can do, you know, on the, on the half court part of it. It's just, I think, settle down a little bit, make some better decisions. Um, defensively, I'll tell you, you know, early I thought we got our body. A couple kids slid over and we got a nice charge. Uh, I think Connor Christensen took a yep. charge. We had some other kids come over and, and, and do the same and, and make West take some tough shots. I think they've gotten cleaner looks to the basket as the half went on. So I think we know we've got to you know try to clamp down that, that penetration to the basket again. Those would be my my two things. Um, and then you know just just try and chip away at this. You're not gonna. You know, there's, there's no, there's no there's, fourteen yeah, point shot. No, so. no, there's not. You know what? And as a coach, we always talk about the first five minutes of the second half are the most important part of the game. You know, you either can get yourself back in the ball game here in those first five minutes, or West is going to extend their lead. You know, 21 points, it's a lot of points, but it's not insurmountable. You know, the, oh, ba absolutely. the Badgers came yeah, back from 22, 22 the other day, Ohio yeah. State. Um, so, no, you just that's the way you got to look at it. You, know, you just got to take it one possession at a time, get some stops, you know, get something good on the other end. Um, but – you know, we talked about it, I think, off the air, Joel, one time. You know, it's easier said than done. You know, West just speeds you up so much, and it makes you do things you're uncomfortable with or maybe that you're not capable of doing as a player. So just try to get the kids settled down a little bit. You know, slow down just a little bit on the offensive end once you break that pressure. And if you can get a couple buckets to fall through, that allows you to set up your defense. It allows you to now turn the tables and maybe create some opportunities Absolutely. With, from the defensive end. And, you know, those easy looks that we've missed, you know, you convert on those, you, you get a little confidence. Yeah, and you also just keep that score a little closer. West doesn't, you know, get out to such a big lead. And, and do the things you can do to control and maybe turn the tide. You mentioned Connor Christensen having a couple charge. Uh, he took a couple charges yeah. in the first half. We're just thrilled to see Connor back out there. I sure, mentioned it absolutely. early on. Captain on the football team is safety. Uh, third game of the season as the Muskies traveled to Bettendorf. Uh, just suffered a, a really abnormal freak injury. It was almost like a crushed injury. Um, ended up having to have emergency surgery. This was all written, you know, through the fall. Um, had his spleen removed. He had an emergency splenectomy. And we're just thrilled that not only did Connor seem to recover nicely, he's medically been cleared to play and compete in sports again to finish out his senior season. Absolutely. I think he's going to be a crowd favorite for everybody. I think it's it's hard not to pull for a kid like a that. Great kid. Yes, absolutely. As we get ready to start the second half, the Muskies will go back to their first three, their first starting five: Diamond Crahey, Caleb Geddes, Luke Wieskamp, Dante Lee, and Braden Huffer. As the Muskies will start, he gets a nice screen from actually Christensen's out there yeah, being rewarded. Good. 
Diamond crazy That's, gets it going, gets a bucket. That's the kind of start you need in the second half, Joel. Just get a little confidence. That was a nice job by Diamond taking the ball, the basket under control. Jermaine Gardner crosses over, finds Carruthers. Carruthers now, left, the lefty goes left. Floater in the lane, no good. Offensive rebound by Gardner. Joel, maybe it's that basket because West has missed a couple <laughs> in close. Maybe there's a lid on that hoop on that end of the floor because uh, let's hope that, that that keeps happening. But West, again, gets three offensive rebounds. This is their third shot at this. That's no good now. Crahey gets the rebound. And Hufford pushes the pace. Long three from Wieskamp. No good. Rebounded by Fearless Carruthers. To Nazion Carruthers. That's inside the Clark. Postion with the jumper from the elbow. Missed. And Crahey battling for the rebound. Just sec second chance opportunities here for West. Okay, they are 0 for 4 to start the half, though, so that's a good sign for Muscatine. The offensive foul as Dante Lee takes some hard contact. Let's hope Dante's okay. Yeah, he's he still down. Getting help from his teammates. And he's, he appears to be good. They're waving off the training staff. You mentioned it earlier, Joel. You know, taking those charges is just giving up your body, and that's that's you know that's, that's a tough thing. That's an effort. That's effort. Play. Absolutely. That's the only thing I brought to Coach Hank Murray in my <laughs> one year of sophomore basketball. I was good for five fouls and a couple charges a game. I'll tell you, coaches love kids who are willing to stick their stick their nose in there and take a charge. Though that, that there's nothing more that endears a coach than a kid who's willing to do that. Crahey. Gets the ball, he drives. Finds Connor Christensen on the baseline. Back to Lee for three. Good. Three-point basket, Dante Lee. It all started. They broke the press nicely, and I think they settled down. And then a big turnover there. Made buckets. Muscatine able to reset their defense, and they force a turnover. And now Wieskamp will inbound for Muscatine. Wieskamp gets it over the timeline. Christensen with a good screen as Hufford dribbles it to the elbow. And another held ball. It'll be West ball. I was just going to speak that I thought this pressure had softened just a little bit there. <laughs> and before you know it, uh, the words couldn't come out of my mouth. He ties them up and they, they get possession. And it, it's almost like there's a – I think about it from a, a football perspective, having decoordinated defenses – if you see a guy flow one way, it's an automatic blitz. If they see the back of the numbers, they're told to trap. There's yes. like an automatic trigger. These guys just go. They may not be the defensive call, but they have that green light to trap. Another missed shot. Muscatine still unable to get that offensive rebound as Zion Carruthers comes down with it. Caution with the screen. Shot fake. Gardner gets to the rim, misses right. it. And now Muscatine with the breakout. Hufford. One-on-one, -on -one, spin move, and he's wow. able to finish. Nice, wow. strong finish from the senior. I thought he turned an easier shot into a <laughs> tough one, but maybe he got style points on that. that Dude, was a, the contact that was, a big was coming. And Muscatine on a 6-0 run here. Got it down to 14 here, Joel. 7-0 run, excuse me. I tell you, West is 0 for the half, aren't they? And not there. They get a big three. Jermaine Gardner. He's got eight. Another deflected pass. Christensen able to come down with it. Back to Crahe. Lee has it blocked. Hapashin did a nice job on the closeout. Over to Gardner. Christensen did a great job hustling back there. Both teams are just kind of catching their breath there. It looks like there's a little lull in play. Gardner with the jumper. No good. Rebound lead. Crahe with the layup. Nice. Up and good. A much more confident offensive attack here for the Muskies. 
Nice pass and nice finish. Dante, nice pass to Diamond. Diamond's showing a little bit of his potential there. He's got, he's got nice length. Really nice, good defense there. Nice block as shot by him. Rebound. Up to Hufford. He's camp with the shot fake. Hufford for three. And that's good. Braden Hufford is on fire in the second half. And Coach Robinson wants a timeout. Hufford with 10 points here. And the Muskies chipping away at this lead. We'll keep it right here. Even though it's a full timeout, this is a big momentum swing here as the Muskies have come out firing on all cylinders. Well, you can just see just the, the, the way the kids walked off the floor at, there from Muskie team. A lot more confident. You know, yeah. uh, bench was up off their feet. So, yeah, they've really settled down. I think, you know, they've done a nice job getting through that press and converting it at the other end. You know, Diamond had a nice basket there. They had a couple other ones. So, yeah, I think, Joel, I think they have settled down a little bit. Yeah, I think so, sometimes just getting that chalkboard time to show, hey, what you guys are trying to do, what you're doing is right. Believe in it. Just go out and do it. And I think we're seeing that with the Muskies. And getting some defensive rebounds here and, and getting looking to run when they get those rebounds. Because everybody's crashing the offensive boards for West. So if they're able to secure one, you've got a run out ready to go. Yeah, we've done a nice job when we've got, gotten the ball, getting it up the floor and thrown over the top. I'll tell you one thing offensively, what I like too, is I think what we're doing is passing more than dribbling. And I yep. think we over dribble a little bit in the first half there, especially as the double team's coming. And now it seems like we're moving the ball and it's hard for the double team to get there. We've gotten rid of it before they get to us. Coach Norman Dale would be proud. Absolutely. <laughs> Four passes. Tell you what, you know, the, the kids are fired up from Muscatine. They look like they've got a lot more energy. Well, and, and the West kids seem a little, little, you know, a little stunned. And you mentioned Diamond Crahey's potential. That last possession did a fantastic job moving his feet and getting a blocked shot, creating that run out that gave Muscatine the leverage on offense. Yeah, did it on both ends of the floor. Lost assignment there. There's a bucket there as Scott completes the layup. I'm sure Coach Robinson's happy with it after a timeout. You sell your guys down. They got a nice, easy look on the other end there. I think the Muskies wanted a reach-in foul there, and they're going to get crazy. That's three now on Diamond, and that could be a factor here. Well, I think if anything, as you've indicated earlier in the first half, that at least prevented a layup there. If you're going to yep. foul, that's probably a good foul. Unfortunate that it's his third foul, though. I think the purple and gold faithful thought that there was a foul before that one occurred, however. Good active hands there from Hufford. Both teams are really aggressive on the, on the defensive end. And now Nazayan Carruthers drives right. Lefty spins back. Good defense from Dante Lee. And Carruthers... It's it back over. This is one of the longer possessions we've had in the entire game. And then a good finish. As that was Landon Winston. Boy, that was a really strong take by the Winston kid. See, I thought we moved the ball real nice there, Joel. Side to side. Strong drive from to the Blue basket. Camp. I always say as a coach, good passes lead to good shots. And I think we're passing the ball much better. You know, West is not getting as many hands on the on the balls. Gardner gets a good screen and gets to the rim. Now Melendez on the wing has it deflected. Substitution is Shadrick. And Jamilan Gardner will check in. Well, you have to really be strong with the basketball, don't yep. you, when you play West? I would say as a coach in the scouting report, I'd say active hands were for West. That'd be at the top of my uh, scouting list. Uh-oh, looks like a run out here, Joel. And a dunk from the Zion Carruthers, and he's going to get teed up for hanging on the rim. And so now the Muskies will get a couple free throws here. I think there's no question he hung on the rim, Joel, but as a player, I didn't know what that felt like a lot, but... Um, <laughs> I think the kid was worried there was a kid coming yeah, underneath I him and for safety, and I, I wish officials wouldn't call that. Um, you know, especially if there's any inkling that a kid yeah. might, because I'll tell you, it is very dangerous when a kid's up like and, that. 
And he didn't give any, and I agree with you, no. he didn't give any no, was, look to the player. There wasn't any no, verbalization. No, he wasn't trying to be, you know. But Hufford will go to the line for technical, and that's a benefit to Muscatine. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think if you're coaching against it, you're thrilled to see it. If, you're, yeah. if it happens to your guy, I you're think probably disappointed. The biggest thing is it, 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 it takes a little of the momentum yeah. away that you just got on a big dunk, yep. and now you're going to set your press up and everything, and now it's like, yeah, okay. And I'll be honest, unless it was an eight foot hoop in the cul de sac in my neighborhood, I was never going to have that worry. So. so now Muscatine will keep the ball after making two free throws. Hufford goes to the line and knocks both down. He tries to cut into this lead some more. Wieskamp for three. He looked a little rushed on that, I thought. He was his feet set, but I thought he just rushed it just a little bit. Now Shadrick pushed the break. Jamilan Gardner. From the wing. Reset the offense. Gets a high ball screen. Lead's going to get called with the foul on the hedge. And really kudos to Coach Torelli and the Muskie bench because I would be asking where that is when we're on offense. Yeah, there's definitely been a lot of contact. Uh, both, both ways, both teams are playing so hard and physical. And, um, it's just tough to officiate games like no, this, I too, though. I think they've done a really nice job being consistent. Mylon Gardner gets it to Shadrick. And spacing confusion there for Wes. The Zion Crothers turns it over. And now Hufford will run it out. And nice. finish at the rim. Hufford's got 14 now for the Muskies. Under a minute to play here in the third quarter. Crothers for three. And he's looking to score every time. He's at 15. 17 point lead. Yeah, Braden Hufford has really given the Muskies a boost this half. And the Muskies get the call here. Yeah, there's a lot of contact there. Uh, I know number one wasn't happy with the call, and I'm not sure if the foul was on one, but there's two or three bodies in there, and there's a lot of contact. The Zion Carruthers will get a little bit of a breather. Melendez will inbound for Muscatine. In the crazy. Has it deflected out. Muscatine has done a nice job on the out-of-balance plays. They've gotten some nice looks. They haven't always converted, but they, right there they gave themselves a chance there. Martinez for three. No good. Rebound by Shadrick. Martinez, a high percentage three-point shooter at the sophomore level. They're looking for him to be maybe a sharpshooter off the bench. Coach Torelli told me that his sophomore year when he had him, he shot 34% from the three-point wow. line. Wow. That's, as you said, that's a, it's an outstanding percentage from three-point line. Ten seconds to go here in the third quarter. Jermaine Gardner looks for the three. Offensive board going to be out of bounds on the Muskies. Got seven tenths yep. left there, Joel. It's going to have to be a catch and shoot off yep. quick here. It's you know, tough to convert. Looks like there's a little extra cricket yep. going on. They're doing his... Yeah, they're trying to make sure it doesn't escalate. He gets it off. Shot no good. That was close. As the Muskies cut into this lead, 17 down. As we start the, the fourth quarter, we'll take a 30-second break. We'll be back right after this on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Affor Affordable metal manufacturing provides cut-to-length rolled metal panels for commercial, residential, and agricultural roofing. We take pride in delivering our products with a short lead time, normally three days or less. Our panels are cut to the nearest eighth of an inch for greater efficiency and less waste. Affordable Metal can even roll your panels on site. Call today for a free quote and let us become your preferred supplier. Affordable Metal Manufacturing. Our business is rolling.
Artie's Ice Cream and Grill, 609 West 5th Street, Wilson, Iowa. And we are back we at Muscatine are. High School Community Gym as the Muscatine Muskies trail Davenport West 47-30. And the officials are, it is Muscatine ball. And Connor Christensen intelligently gets in. That was a pretty quick set down there by Diamond he, Crahey. Usually this early on in the season, they're a little bit lax on that, but. Must have a long drive home. And yeah, Jaime Martinez gets to the nice rim. Drive. Nice drive. You know, Muscatine really had a good third quarter, so yep. hopefully we can keep cutting into this lead. And their plus minus was on the right side in the third quarter, and they're hoping to chip away here in the fourth. Another big, big basket to start the quarter. Seven points now for Dante Van. Big three there from Jamilin Gardner. West seemed to, seems to have an answer there. You know, we didn't uh, step out on the shooter there, and he uh, took his time and knocked it down. Martinez going to get called for the charge. And that'll be Jaime's first foul. Seven minutes to play here. One thing I'm a little jealous of, though, Joel, is I see Coach Robinson standing. I know coaches can stand you had, now. You had the seatbelt know, rule. I, you could, I mean, <laughs> you would have my, loved that. My goodness. No, I think that's, How many times did Ken Ferris tell you, I have to tell you yeah. to sit down? Uh, Kenny was very gracious, and he was very kind to me. He probably could have teed me up a million He's times. He's one of the greatest yes, officials. He is. In, yes, he is. Him and many others are great officials in. But, no, I'm, I'm glad to see they let coaches do that. Let them coach the kids, you know. I remember we got to play Rockridge a couple times. And yes. Coach Murray loved that because he, yes. could, he, could, he could move. Big three there. Back-to-back yeah. -back threes for West, you know. Carruthers at 18. He's had a nice game for West. Well, he's, you know, played really well in the offensive and defensive. Yeah, so a very complete player. I mean, Martinez able to draw the foul there. And now some substitutions coming in for Muscatine. Betts back in. Cray, Lee, Wieskamp, Pufford, and Betts on the floor for the Muskies. Lee with the strong drive. So that's going to be a block as Clark really sold the contact, but it just wasn't there. Yeah, Dante showed that nice ability to get to the basket and get, get a shot off. Uh, you know, he's a kid who's got that quickness. He's, he's using it. And, uh, you know, they're going to expect big things out of him this year. Misses the first free throw. Leeds crept back to 21 with a couple big three-pointers from West. Now, the Zion Carruthers picks his dribble up. He'll get it back. Lee, man-to-man -man defense. Bet's able to fight for the loose ball, and they're going to call. They're going to call a jump ball, and that'll stay with West. You mentioned a few possessions ago the length of the possession. This is the last year for that. Yeah. I was implementing the shot yes. clock next season. You know, I'd have to say another great rule change. Yes. I think it's a long time coming. Nope. I think it'll be great for kids. It'll be great for the fans. I think all around it's just a really, really great move. Well, especially since we're starting to see it at the AAU level as well. These kids are used to playing with it. So I'm glad the National Federation of High School Athletics has uh, approved the rule change. The Zion Carruthers at the free throw line. This is the first free throw. You should run for mayor, Coach. You know everybody. At well, Avion Watson just stopped by to say hello, and he's a great kid. Had him in, in school. It's great to run into former players. Yeah, and, and had him in basketball last year. Great kid. Really good player, too. He's going to be a, a future uh, bright spot for the Muskies. And another offensive rebound. Well, while we're talking about that, I'll tell you, Muskies got a lot of great young kids. Yeah. Uh, Avion's one of them. They have a lot of good freshmen. They have some freshmen playing on the sophomore team. You know, Luke is a freshman playing on the varsity. Right. So they've got a lot of good young players, and you just got to try to, you know, keep building those parts. And things will come together. Hoffert will get the inbound, and they look to trap. 
And now Wieskamp gets it deflected. There's your old coach's tip. He's yeah. charting those tips. Whoever's yeah. charting tips for West has been active tonight. Yeah, that would be a big, big oh job. Oh, my God. Need, need, need several sheets. No, they do a nice job, as you, as you indicated. Getting their hands on a lot of basketballs. When you can do that, good things usually happen. Well, rejected there. That was a fearless Carruthers. Wow. It's a nice block. Good help well, side defense. Yeah, there. Caleb did a nice job taking the ball. I thought he took it a little strong to the basket. He had just made a nice defensive play. That happens. Inbound to Martinez. I thought we missed Caleb on the out-of-bounds play. I thought he got in front of his player, but we just missed him. I mean, Martinez for three. Long. It's going to be off bets. Did a nice job getting offensive position for that rebound. Just couldn't quite get his hands up quick enough. That's one of those where you try to teach kids to have your hands up all the time. All the time. Strong take from the Zion Carruthers. Oldest playing basketball, Joel. Give and go. Yeah. They ran it well there. Well, Hufford. Yeah, that's a, that's just too long a pass, you know, against this pressure. And you got kids in the back here with that kind of quickness. And the ball's in the air just, you know, too too, too long, long, too much time, too much air time. Got to make shorter passes against this press. Short, crisp ones. Martinez gets it back to Hufford, they, and they trap him immediately. Seems like West, you know, is, is, that pressure's ramped up again. Martinez gets to the rim. He's going to draw the foul. And they're going to take a look here at my Mario Clark. I think he's have a head injury. Yeah, he may have hit his head on the floor okay. going for that loose ball. And so they need to stop play here. Yeah. I tell you, those head injuries are the scariest things. You know, he he looks like yeah. he's really looks like he's out on his feet. Yeah, and, Co and there's Nicole Calvert. She does such Fine a great job. Trainer here Tell you what, it's just outstanding to have a trainer on, on staff like that. I mean, Muscatine, yeah. I don't know if all schools have that, but I think it's just really necessary for yeah. the safety of these kids. And it's something I've literally known my whole life. My dad served in that yes, role for so many years. absolutely, absolutely. Dr. Kraushauer, absolutely. Good guy. We are very fortunate to have him helping us. I'll tell you, there's there's definitely a correlation. You know, the West kids, the, the pressure's ramped up again. I think their offense leads to you no, know, that I defense. Agree. And they've scored a little bit on the offense. When they were struggling early on there with all those bunnies they were missing, yep. it didn't seem like the pressure was as much. And we were also handling the ball better. But now all of a sudden that pressure seems to be ramped up again. They're having a little success at the offensive end. And they feed off that. Martinez makes the second free throw. Good body control there from Carruthers. It's a good closeout by Wieskamp. The Zion Carruthers from three. No good rebound by Fearless Carruthers. And then Melendez with the foul. It's going to be two shots here from the Zion Carruthers. Well, I know we don't have totals, but I'd like to know Davenport West offensive rebound. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, they've really hurt us on the second possession. I mean, two, Good three, stuff. four sometimes per possession. And you know, that was a three-point shot, and you're going to have long rebounds, and they, they're active enough as it is, but, boy, they've really done a nice job on the offensive glass tonight. Well, and some of that, too. You, sometimes a lot of these guys who have minimal varsity basketball experience, you need to see it on film sometimes before you really believe that it's happening. And there'll be some good teaching opportunities yeah, here for this coaching staff. Yeah, everything's a learning experience, you know. And, and this is a really, other than, you know, our couple seniors in the, in the lineup there, it's a relatively young team. Yep. It really is. The Zion Carruthers second free throw. No good. Rebounded by Wieskamp. Nice job by Luke to track that long rebound down. That's just an effort, to, you know, rebound there. be remiss and I don't know if he's tuning in I, he's probably very busy but Luke's older brother Joe had 20 points nine rebounds and seven assists for the Austin Spurs in the NBA G League last night his leading his biggest scoring game as a professional great to see Joe continue what we've you know known for so long and as he's progressed throughout his career I think it's just great that uh, you know people uh, 
you know, able to watch him and follow his career. And, and then we've got another Wies camp in the Muscatine yep. lineup here. And I, I think that just leads to more excitement. And yeah, we hopefully do. he can follow in his brother's footsteps. We see Matt, his older brother, in the gym a lot. He's in, you know, medical school doing things here, still in the community. Sister-in-law, Emily. And then Sam, you know, going to school to be a pilot. There's just a tremendous family. And we're excited to see Luke. We're also just really excited to see how he integrates in with the rest of this Absolutely. team. Great family, as you said. And I got an opportunity to coach Steve when I was an assistant coach when I first came. Oh, yeah. That was just a treat. Great kid. Uh, great player. Wow. Dad was a great player. They Great team. And just and, like you said, just and great And Dana, family. their mother, is just one of the best human beings you will ever Absolutely. meet in your entire life. Absolutely. Thirty-second timeout here for Muscatine as we're given the timeout. We'll keep it right here as the Muskies trail fifty-nine to thirty-three. West has kind of righted the ship a little bit here yeah. in the fourth quarter and kind of got got control of the game again. I think we made a nice little run there, and, and uh, you know, it was, uh, good to see the Muscatine kids come out. Uh, you know, in the second half there and. There's no quitting them. No. They're still playing very hard, and they're trying to execute their plan. Absolutely, there's not a, they're, they're they're not. Absolutely, there's no maverick out there trying to just play hero ball. They understand that the way you get back into this is to work together yes. as a group. Absolutely. Time has his shot blocked. Good block there from Winston. And Jemiah and Gardner, quick on the breakout. Yeah, unfortunately led to a run out there. Great pass by Martinez. Shot blocked, though, by Poston. Timeout by West. They want to reset some of their, their play. That's get too back bad. under control. Too good. I thought we did a nice job breaking the press again. Ended up with two on one. and. It might have been a good, better decision for Connor. It's kind of hindsight now, but maybe jump stop, make a little bounce pass to the uh, kid that was on the wing there. So we're going to take a quick break here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. It's timeout. Hi, I'm Ashley, and I'd like to take a minute to talk to you about Pearl City Media. At Pearl City Media, we develop custom marketing solutions for businesses of all kinds. Between radio, cable TV, newspaper, Facebook, Google, and YouTube ads, it can be tough to make sure your business is seen and understood by the right people. Pro City Media understands that people are everywhere, and reaching the right kind of people for your business isn't so simple. Maybe you want to increase your business's awareness and sell more inventory, or maybe you want to book more appointments, or maybe you need a bump in your lunchtime traffic. Whatever your goals are, Pearl City Media will listen and create a strategic campaign focused on helping you reach those goals. We handle all the strategy, planning, execution, and we'll update you on the results of the campaign while constantly evaluating the effectiveness of your campaign. And welcome back. It's four minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Can't say enough about our sponsors bringing you Muskie Athletics, the Muscatine Community Y, Riots Rebels Salon, and Bickford senior living as Muscatine fouls Postion, and he'll go to the free throw line. We just didn't get quite set there on that out of bounds play. We were just just kind of getting out of the timeout, and, and uh, you know, we've got to do a better job getting in front of that player down by the basket. Postion misses the first free throw. Let's eat catering, bringing you musky basketball all season long, and Rivo plumbing and heating. Don't forget to download the Discover Muscatine app. In the Android Google Store and Apple Store. You get up to date alerts for all things Muscatine news and sports related. East Camp on the wing, drives left, draws a triple team. The foul is on the floor, but that will be Muscatine into the one and one. Boy, in football speak, Joe, we'd say they really fly to the ball, don't they? Holy yeah, cow. As you said, they had three players going to the basketball in that the last drive. So that's the fourth foul now on the Zion Carruthers. He has 21 points. He's kind of the straw that stirs the drink for them. Definitely a leader for them. There's no question. And it starts on the rebounding and defensive end for him. 
as Luke Wieskamp will go to the free throw line, the young freshman. This may be the first time he's come out of the game, Joel. I think the Carruthers kid, isn't it? It might be. I think he may, yeah, he may have had a 30-second or 40-second break a little bit earlier, but... Luke makes the front end of the one and one. Second free throw, good. Dante Lee picks up Gardner as he brings it across the timeline. Just three and a half to play here in the ball game. Winston drives left. He's met by Diamond Crahey, and that's going to be five fouls on Diamond. And he's frustrated, but he's played really well tonight. I know he's got five fouls now, but there's a lot of good things coming from number 23 this season. Yeah, Diamond's really showed some potential tonight, and he's, he's done some really nice things out there. I know he's talking right now with Coach Richards about trying to stay vertical. Like you can just see him on the bench instructing him. Because Diamond, you know, as a player, you don't really realize, but he came down just a little yep. bit, and that gives that official that reason to blow the whistle, you know. And I thought he was in good position, but as Coach is saying, just you, you got to stay straight up. And Diamond's, you know, the great thing you like to see about it is, and Coach is patting him, you know, right now, and so him a little bit. It means something. Yeah, to that's see, that's an important. You thing. can see it bothered him a little bit, and, and, and you know that that's that's a good sign. It's a good sign. He cares. And you gotta have you gotta have that. Second free throw good by Winston. And that ball's deflected out of bounds. And Muscatine will now inbound again. Luke Wieskamp doing the inbounding for the Muskies. But that deflection does keep him. He can't run the baseline. Gets it into Lee. And there's another trap. Now Hufford goes strong to the rim. He has it blocked by Shadrick. Now Melendez skipped past to Hufford. That's deep, and that's deflected. That's going to stay with Muscatine. I like the aggressiveness by Hufford there. He's trying to get a quick shot off. Yeah. yeah. Good ball movement. Yes, it was. really trying to create some offense. Tell you what. And leave great on the set play there. Again, I'm so impressed with Muscatine's out-of-bounds plays tonight and how they've executed there. They haven't lost converted, but they've really got good looks or opportunities. Done Rebound a real nice job with that. By Winston. Another loose ball saved by the Falcons. Gardner now almost has it poked away by Lee. And they're going to call Lee for the foul. I thought that was pretty good defensive position. Yeah, he's still playing hard out there. He's really trying and to now that's five on fouls on Dante Lee, so he'll have to take a seat as well. Again, you can see he's disappointed too, and, and you know, that's another good sign that, you know, he cares. He cares, and he wants to be on the floor. And This is the point in the game, Coach Joe, where you, as a coach you're just trying to tell kids, hey, we're playing for the next game. Yep. And we're playing to get better. Yeah. Score right now, it doesn't matter. Well, one thing's for sure, you know, we're gonna we're getting good work against the press. Yeah. Whoever presses us next, we're gonna be we're gonna we're gonna have lots of practice. Because I'll tell you, West isn't letting up, yo. With, no, with two forty seven and they're still pressing. No, and know, it's a, and it's a completely different line. I yeah. mean there's the five new guys in yeah. here for yeah. for West. I tell you, I the more the games wore on, West has some outstanding quickness. I they are really, really, really quick. Unfortunately, their Nazian Carruthers just took a tip ball right off the face. Like, it, just an un, unlucky spot there on the bench. Hopefully, he's okay. That three ball is good from Cleo Granberry, the sophomore who's now in for the Falcons. Betts. Brings it up for the Muskies, gets it to Melendez, finds Hufford on the baseline. Back to Melendez. And Connor Christensen. Melendez for three. No good. Betts 
unable to get it. Yeah, but that was uh, Tayshawn Scott who knocked it out of bounds. Joel, I'm trying to find words to describe West pressure. Killer, killer bees swarming. I mean, my yeah, God, I mean, they are they are all over the floor. I mean, they just move with the basketball. It's high risk. I mean, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but but boy, they they've done a nice job with their pressure tonight. And then they're and they're in everyone's face too. There's absolutely. no there is no absolutely. breathing. They can tell you what kind of toothpaste you use this morning. Good layup there from Betts. Tremendous uh, pass from the Melendez young man. And great to see Caleb finish that strong. Yep. That'll be a nice confidence builder for, for him. Did a great job, had his hands up, received the pass, went up strong with the ball. And now West is in the double bonus. Granberry will go to the free throw line. First free throw, good. Sophomore, <laughs> sophomore looks sophomore, like he's got a nice shot. A yeah, bit he, here. Really, he really looks like he has nice form. As you indicated, he had a nice big three, just a possession to go, and now he's looking good at the free throw line. You jinxed him, Joel. Yeah, look, he gets the rebound, or Scott got the rebound. Then Granberry gets the putback. So his, stats, his stat line's going to look pretty good here, Joel. Yeah. <laughs> keeps his chin at the rim. And Points per minute, he's, 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 he's really up there. <laughs> no, and as a coach, you really, this is the kind of game you want to get a kid like that, uh, you know, some, some experience on the floor. And that's going to be valuable, I'm sure, for him and Davenport West down the line. We're going to call a foul here on West before the ball inbounds. And that'll send Miles Melendez to the free throw line for a one and one Miles reminds me a lot of his brother. Quick yep. feet, yep. really plays hard, great defensive player. You know, just really gives it, uh, you know, 100% every second he's on the floor and never gets tired. And, and his brother was the same way. And a leader, too. I absolutely, mean. absolutely. Nice rebound there by Caleb. Just one, of the, convert. one of the fantastic multi-sport athletes and a great soccer player. Yes. And we see that on the girls' side for the Muskies, Coach McBride. He's like, we may not shoot real well, but we got seven or eight girls who can defend, and they're all on that elite soccer team here for the Muskies. Great dig out there by Hufford. So again, defensive pressure from Glass. And that's that quickness. You know, that kid just didn't give up on the play there, and yep. he, he ran Braden down and got, got a steal. The one thing that we've seen from Coach Robinson that I've been very impressed is you can tell that the, he doesn't care about mistakes as long as the mistakes are made at full speed. And and his guys have the freedom to go, go, go. And there's not a lot of micromanaging situations. It's let's just run and let's we're, we're going to create more more term, turmoil than we're going to cause on our own. I think that's a really, really evident point, yeah. You know, and kids, yeah, when they don't have to think, they're just playing freely. Yep. You're right. Good things happen, generally. Gardner makes the first free throw. He is definitely, you know, playing to his team's strengths. Yeah. Because, like I say, yeah. I this this every kid they have on the floor is quick. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I, it's just, the and, team, they're, and they're invested in the yes, scheme yes, too. They, 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 they understand yeah. what they're I, supposed I can't, to do. I can't overestimate their their team quickness. It's just. Really Shadrick misses the layup, and Wieskamp gets the rebound. And he has it poked out, but he gets a foul called. Yeah, they just don't give up on many balls either. You know, their effort, their, you know, as a coach, when we would press, and you always try to teach kids, when the ball gets behind you, you turn and sprint. And yeah. their, their kids are doing that. They're, they, yep. they don't give up on the play, and they've run us down a few times and, you know, either got deflections or steals. Devin Sanders with the foul will send Luke Wieskamp to the free throw line. First free throw is good. Luke's got a really nice stroke from the free throw line, doesn't he? God, Joe. <laughs> you, you've learned the I, broadcaster I, 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 jinx. It's a real oh thing. Oh, my God. It is absolutely a true fact. 30 seconds to play here. As the Falcons will just 
Dribble it out. Shadra gets the layup. Luis Camp will bring it up. And they're going to let it play on, even though Sanders had stepped out of bounds. They're going to dribble it out there. And that's going to do it for the time here. Davenport West defeats Muscatine 72-40. to We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back with the High V postgame show as we award our game awards, our offensive player of the game presented by Affordable Metal Manufacturing and defensive player of the game presented by Eastern Iowa Power Washers. We'll take a short break. We'll be back with some post-game action on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially when it comes to the driving experience. Let's take a closer look. Our legendary smooth track steering provides buttery smooth turns, making maneuvering around obstacles a breeze. Unlike the jerky feel of other options, our smooth track steering is so effortless, anyone could make short work of the lawn. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Car controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. Affordable metal. And welcome back. It's post-game show presented by High V. I'm Joel Krausar along with Coach Terry Youngbauer here as the Muskie Boys fall by 30 to the Davenport West Falcons. And Coach, you know, it was the first game of the season at home for these guys, so our first look at them. I think there's a lot of good things coming for this Muscatine team. Absolutely. You know, at this stage of the year, yeah, you'd like to win every game, but you know, you're not going to. And you're just trying to get better. You want to get better at practice every day. You want to get better in the games. And I think the biggest thing that I saw that, that I was, was a real positive was the way they came out to start the second half. Yep. You know, got down, you know, big in the first half, came out that first five minutes of the second half, and I thought they really had a nice spurt and, you know, got themselves back yep. in the game there. and Cut the lead to 12. Yes, yes, Cut the lead to yes, 12 after being yes. down 22. And I tell you, that's, that's, that was a really, really, really good sign for Muscatine. And, you know, hopefully they can build on things like that and, Thought they had some kids who played well off the bench and then a couple kids in the starting lineup too. So, you know, they'll, they'll just got to keep working to get better. Braden Hufford kind of led that charge at the beginning of the second half. He's our affordable metal manufacturing offensive player of the game. 14 points for Braden. I also had him mentally for five assists. So he was kind of really the catalyst for the offense, especially in that second half. And they also played great defense in that five-minute stretch in the second half. And our defensive player of the game from Eastern Iowa Power Washers is Diamond Crahey. He's going to be a force, especially protecting the rim for the Muskies as the season progresses. Diamond's got really nice length. He's one of those guys that you look at and say, that's a basketball player, yeah. you know? And he's really a nice kid. I got a chance to coach him in eighth grade. I loved coaching him. Really happy to see he's back out for basketball. Wish he wouldn't have missed that year. I understand he went out last year. That's my understanding. Yeah, and, and I could, if I'm wrong on that, I apologize, but I'm just going off what I had heard. Uh, but Diamond's got a lot of potential. He's and I don't want to use this pun, but I'm going to have to, Joel. He's a diamond in the rough. <laughs> okay? I mean, no, I really like him as a young man, and, and uh, I think he's going to help them, and he's only going to get better. Absolutely. So we're looking forward to more Muskie Boys basketball, and we're going to have some of it next week. We've got a busy week next week for you here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Check your calendar. It's in this week's edition 
of the Discover Muscatine newspaper that was mailed to your house. You can also go to discovermuscatine.com. Tomorrow morning, Muscatine Manta Rays Swimming is on Discover Muscatine. You can watch our youth swimming program go at it. Monday night, Wrestling Triangular here. I'll be here with Wade McLeod bringing you the Muscatine Wrestling Triangular. Coach Scott Mock's first home meet of his career as the head coach. Tuesday night, we'll have hoops. Wednesday night, we get it off. Thursday night, we've got more wrestling. Your only home for musky wrestling is Discover Muscatine. No other local media covers wrestling like we do. Friday, more basketball. Saturday afternoon, more basketball. So basically, if you hit that little bell on your social media page, whether you're watching us on Facebook, on YouTube, or on Muscatine Power and Water, set a reminder. You'll get that alert that we're live, and you can check out all the hard work that these young student athletes are doing here in our community. Coach, maiden voyage on the air. Joel, I'd, I'd say you passed uh, the flying colors. I, well, I appreciate that so much. Like I say, I've listened to you and Brian over the years. always admired the job you guys do. And while I mentioned Brian there, I want to just give a shout out to him and his wife, Deb. And we're thinking of her and, and his uh, Brian and their entire family. I know she's really going through a lot. And, and uh, our prayers and thoughts are with them. And and like I say, I hope uh, I you know, if Brian listened a little bit. I hope, uh, hope he can give me some pointers, you know, or. He's, uh, for the next round. He's a great mentor. Yeah, I wouldn't yes. be here without him. He's the one who kind of threw his hat in the ring and said, yeah, he can do this. And I, I appreciate that. And we enjoy our time here. So thanks so much, coach. We're looking forward to the season. Thank you. You know, Thanks to Bob Long too, who's you're going to hear his voice a time or two on the, on the year as well. And shout out to Zoe. I think she had a big game last night for the Wartburg Knights. Outstanding. So, so great to see these muskies moving on and, and doing great things. We'll be back. Like I said, more plenty of opportunities to catch the hard work of the youth in our community. You know, you taught for a long time. I have a soapbox, and it's a lot of times we hear all the bad things that kids do. When you turn on our broadcasts, these are the ones you want to hang your hat on. If you own a business in town, these are the people you're going to be hiring in about 10 years because these are the ones that are willing to put in the work and do things that aren't selfish, and that's important. That's what high school athletics and activities bring. Absolutely. Muscatine, there's some fantastic kids in Muscatine, boys, girls. Um, just, you know, I marvel at them, too. Yep. And, I, and I feel blessed to have an opportunity to coach a lot of the kids. And it's really fun for me to do this broadcast with you and see some of the kids I coached yep. in eighth grade over, over at, uh, you know, Central and Susan Clark and West. And so it's, it's exciting. Yep. Thanks so much. We're going to sign off. It's Muskie Basketball on the Discover Muscatine.